what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we are here back mr walter's world shout out to walters uh because he just hit a million um uh, before 2023 ended i got to witness that and see that so that's amazing to be able to hit a million subscribers on youtube uh but he's back with it with one of my favorites the don'ts the do's and don'ts and we got the don'ts of visiting europe uh i had to check this out because this is a more updated version this is six months ago. I know usually I check out his videos. They're like uh, from years ago and different things. He travels a whole lot. So I'm trying to be like him one day. That's my goal. That's my goal to be like Mr. Walter's world out here. But we got the don'ts of Europe. Um, I have mentioned this is the year. This got to be the year I get to visit Europe. So um, I take these. I take this information and, you know, uh, install it, write it down, save it, because these things I got to remember when I make that trip, when I start traveling, um, at least to Europe for sure. So y'all hit that subscribe button and let's check this out. Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Athens, Greece, here in Europe. Oh, and Greece. today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting Europe. And yes, I realize Europe is a humongous place, and it's really hard to have one kind of set list of don'ts when going to such a various, true, true. various diverse place like Europe. And that's why the first don't I have for you is when you come to Europe, realize don't think Europe is one homogenous place. If you compare Portugal and Poland or France and Finland, you have completely different cultures, completely different languages, Thanks. completely different foods, all kinds of stuff like that. Oh. So don't think, oh, I went to London, I saw Europe. That's like saying you went to New York and you saw the US or you went to Beijing and right, you saw Asia. True. It is not that way. Europe is got it's just chock full yeah. of cool countries, cool cities, cool cultures. That is true because every every place is so different. Like I remember when I went to New York, I've been to Florida uh shoot where else have i been i've been to ohio uh been to kentucky been to oklahoma everywhere is different and you can tell you can tell you know of course the sceneries and stuff but even when you talking to people and stuff you can just hear it you just hear how different it is like you you know somebody where someone's from you know because they have just the accent and stuff like that like most of y'all you <laughs> If you're not from Texas, if, but if you've been to Texas, you'll probably think, oh, you got a Texas accent. You sound country. It's cool you know, music. you got that all country Texan accent. All kinds of stuff for tourists to visit and to explore Ooh. in all these different cultures and all these different regions. So wherever you're going, realize that having a vacation in Greece is going to be completely different than having a vacation in Norway. Yes, there's beautiful right. museums and beautiful nature in both of them. Nice. But they're very different nature and very different cultures. So do take that in there. So just remember that. Don't think Europe is one homogenous place. Yes, some things are similar. Yes, you do have some similar fashion among the youths because H&M and Zara and Stradivarius and yeah. things like that <laughs> are all over the place. But just know you do have distinct cultures and distinct differences. And that's why we have so many don'ts videos for the different countries. If you're going to Greece, we have don't mm. videos for that. Don'ts for Germany, don'ts for Spain, don't for Portugal. Everywhere because different. Because there are so many differences that you can't have just one list of don'ts. So that's why this list of don'ts we do have it's kind of general overall things and we'll try to like make some examples for the different countries it might fit into just to get you better prepared for it. So another don't of Europe is don't pack everything and the kitchen sink. Make it easy <laughs> on yourself and just Facts. pack what you absolutely need because going to the pharmacy or going to the grocery store or going shopping for clothes or shoes is part of that cultural experience and that's why you're here. That's why you're exploring this great, amazing I see that's what that's one thing I think about because I'm like man when I go how many shoes do I pack how many clothes do how many pairs of clothes I do definitely got to pack light you know but I think about all this stuff you know that's why I, I buy shoes that I can wear with almost anything I never buy shoes that just fit one type of outfit I try to buy shoes that fits all the outfits I wear because you just never know when you hit the road you shouldn't like she said don't pack the whole house. It's like you stand for a few nights. Why packing like you stand for a month? But I like you like options. Some people like options, I guess. You know? and that's why you're here. That's why you're exploring this great, amazing place. This is pretty cool. Place. If you have prescription medicines, obviously those are things that you should bring along with you. And maybe if you're going on a really long trip, 
you need to get extra or get a doctor's note or something like that to bring with you. But in general, if, if you need Tylenol or ibuprofen or something, go to the pharmacy, you can get it here. Don't worry about those kinds of things. Just do it where you are. Also, I'm a big advocate for packing light. The less stuff you have, yeah. the more nimble you are getting around in little tiny places. You make yourself... And then I seen um, there are some hacks on how to actually like fold your clothes. So if you do pack a lot, there's a certain way you have to like fold your clothes or something like that. And I, I think I seen a guy, he was packing. He packed a lot of stuff that he was able to fit in like one medium sized suitcase. But it was like its own personal package for shirts, you know, pants or shorts, underwear, all that stuff. So it's a certain way. You, If you want to pack all that stuff, it's a certain way you have to pack less it. Less of a target for pickpockets and things like that. It just, oh, yeah. And you make yourself That's true. less of a target for pickpockets and things like that. It just, and you have like some space restrictions sometimes on smaller airplanes if you're doing like hopping sort of things or on trains, especially metros. Good Lord, you don't want to get on mm -hmm. a metro with a suitcase that looks like a trunk. So anyway, <laughs> just kind of keep those things in mind. You don't have to bring everything in one or two suitcases. You can bring something small and get things as you need when you're here. And believe me, that's her favorite thing when we come here is shopping, okay? <laughs> so she comes with like two pairs of underwear and like two dresses and she goes home with a full suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice because she- That's how you do it, it so right it's, there. It's cool. Yeah, that's how you <laughs> do so it. So this may sound stupid to some people, but I think it should be said. Europe is not a museum. It is a living, thriving mm. continent full of incredible culture. It's not just going to museums and seeing things. Jesus. And it's not just eating, although Whoa, we do like to that? do that. There's so much more and getting into the places and like experiencing dinner with locals or just hanging out with and having a beer with somebody. There's so much more to these cultures than what's on the surface you know those tourist spots standing in front of the eiffel tower it's lovely but um meeting someone bumping into someone somewhere you know in montmartre and grabbing some bread and cheese yeah. and a bottle of wine and sitting down together that's that's why you do this to make friends to experience nice. what life really is it's not just and she says a key word it's about experience i was just talking or watching a video on australia uh did a video uh react to a video guy he was like quit everything move to australia type of thing but you're just talking about the experience you ain't got to live above your means and have the luxury things of life uh it's i me personally i like nice things don't get me wrong but it's one of those things i would rather save my money and travel and do all that versus buying a you know very expensive home very expensive car the car i got now i'm paying that off that's going to be my baby for the rest for the rest of my days <coughs> i do want a truck though do want a truck because i need a truck just in case i have to move things around but other than that i don't need a fancy truck you know so to make friends to experience what life really is it's not just about the museums and the art and those things although i certainly love those the people that's what makes it rich <coughs> so now we're here in ireland this is actually in kinsale Ooh. island for our next don't of traveling Europe, and that is don't be scared to explore Europe. Yeah. The thing is, is a lot of time when people travel, they only want to see like Paris and Rome and that's it. No, go out and explore more. Yes, Dublin is very cool and it's beautiful. You should check it out, but go out and explore not just the big cities, but go explore the smaller towns and villages around Europe because you can see beautiful places like here in mm -hmm. Kinsale. I mean, we had some of the best food we've had in Ireland in a little tiny oh, village. Oh my goodness, that looked yummy. Don't be worried about it because there's so much to gather when you do explore these countries. And the thing is, in the big cities, it's like in the big city in any country. Yeah. You have no birds are flying close to his head. <laughs> and you do explore these countries. And the thing is, in the big Excuse cities, me. it's like in the big city in any country. You have the same kind of things everywhere you go. Whereas the small villages and the smaller towns and the smaller cities, mm -hmm. you get a better chance of meeting the people, learning the culture, getting authentic food and things like that. So don't be scared wow. to explore so you can actually experience a lot more of Europe. And what's cool with that kind of exploring Europe is the public transportation here is very easy to use. And that goes into our next don't. And our next don't is don't skip out on using public transportation. Look, Europe has done a fantastic job, whether from Bulgaria to Berlin cool. to, you know, Lisbon or wherever. There's great 
buses, trains, subways, metros, whatever, to get you around town, to get you to all the different places from the sites That's to getting nice. to work to getting to shopping. It's really easy to use. But the thing is, if you don't grow up with using public transport, sometimes it can be a little scary. And that's why I say, look, look, take the time to figure out the public transport when you come to Europe, because it can get you everywhere you want to go. And the thing is, if you take taxis and Uber everywhere, one, it's significantly <laughs> more goodness. expensive taking taxis and Uber than it is taking public transportation. Yeah. But sometimes, like if you're in a place like, you know, Paris, you'd be stuck in traffic forever. Taking that metro to go places will speed things up Definitely so much easier and give you a much more that's just like here uh like i said I, just being in new york you really it's i wouldn't say it's pointless to have a car but you would be stuck in a lot of traffic i just seen a lot of traffic there so it's like even if you move around once you're in in the inner cities you definitely got to move around subways and all that stuff because you in a car even just ubering somewhere it's going to take a minute authentic experience of going there because you see the real people going to work, coming to school and all these kind of things. And it is really nice. So don't skip out on the public transport. And some people freak out when they are on public transport. And some would say this, don't freak out when you come to Europe. Look, I know I talk a lot about pickpockets and bag thieves and stuff like that in Barcelona or at the Metro near Coliseum. Yes, these things happen. They happen all over the world. Yeah. And what you need to know is Europe is extremely safe, okay? And so you're gonna be okay when you come here. Now, having said that, of course you have to pay attention. You know, if you're in Barcelona yeah, and you're everywhere. gonna be going around, there are a lot of pickpockets there. And in Rome, there are pickpockets there, but it's not just in the big cities. That's anywhere you go, you need to pay attention. But the thing is, you don't need to be overly freaked out. Yeah. Just be a good tourist and pay attention to your surroundings and don't make yourself a target and you'll be okay. That's definitely everywhere because somebody Europe picking pockets everywhere. Safe. Now, next thing I have to do talk to you about is about money. Don't forget to get a PIN number for your credit card and your debit card when you're going to come to Europe. Because some places, not every place, but some places do require you to use a PIN number to pay and things like that. And if you're going to Scandinavia, they prefer cards. I mean, we were at a bar and they said, sorry, we don't take cash. I'm like, what? We don't take cash, only card. I'm like, all wow. right. And I needed a PIN number to pay. So definitely have that. It's not everywhere, but it is helpful. Another thing with the money side of it, don't forget to carry some cash though, because some places still don't take cards. So mm. you might need to pay for smaller things. Gotta have you know, a little bit of money and, and don't use big bills. They really don't like big bills in Europe. They like people to pay with smaller bills. Now, if you're in the UK or Germany, paying a five euro thing with a 50 euro bill no one's gonna mind but if you're here you know if you're going to portugal and you're trying to pay something five years with a, even a 20 people are like do you have anything smaller so do try to have yeah. smaller bills there don't 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 bring the big bills okay <laughs> and a kind of another thing with that is occasionally you, you might see this but don't be surprised if you have to pay to pee in like a bus station <laughs> oh, or a yeah. train station or maybe sometimes even in, in like restaurants in some countries the thing is, like fancy is that's restaurant. not everywhere. And it's getting less and less, but it does happen. But the thing is, those places where you pay, you're paying for the cleaning people to clean up the toilets. So those are usually the nice mm -hmm. clean ones you actually want to go and sit down on, not the ones that you want to figure out is how can I do a three-point stance right. from five <laughs> meters away, okay? So you do have that. Now, mm -hmm. my next don't is for my American travelers. Definitely had I to do that. US, you, service is all about treating the, the customer like kings and they're going to fall over themselves to help you that you over that the top tip. service don't expect over the top service when you come to europe there's different levels of service throughout europe the way i kind of look at it is it's more people don't see it as like your customer is king okay what they see more is this is my job i do my job professionally mm -hmm. and that's the way it is so it does take longer yeah, to get served, it takes be. longer to get your food, things like that, longer to get your bill, and that's okay. But you should know, don't get in a hurry and don't get upset when you don't get you know, servers trying to kiss your butt because most of the time <laughs> you're not tipping anyway. So that's not what they're living off of. They're living right, off their wages. Yeah. So it is a different setup. So don't be surprised with that. Another do And then good things take time, you know. You want that food to be good? Let it take its time. Let take I it have time, you. This you know? is what I've had the some experience. of the tour I've taken on is don't think your plugs in the U.S. will work here in Europe. They have different plugs here. You can have the continental oh, two wow. frond yeah. plugs, or you might have the ones here in the U.K., which are like three flat things going on there. Look, make sure you bring an adapter for the countries you're going to go to so you can plug your stuff in, okay? Yeah, the thing is, is your phones and your computers, they have the converters already on there, so you're just changing the U.S., you know, slight you oh, know, okay, things yeah. like this into the European ones. If you've got like a hair dryer or something like that, that's going to blow the fuse no matter what. So make sure you're smart about mm -hmm. those things because 
having a good converter does make a difference and you can charge multiple things. Thanks. That's why when I come, I have actually a, like a travel converter that has a plug and USB ports so I can charge everything. And I only need one different thing to change the US version to the European one to Ooh, plug it in the wall. I need to so get one of those. something to think about. So now we're here in Barcelona, and I think it's important to kind of add on from that. Barcelona. Is also realize that don't think you can always pay Ooh, with that's cash. that's nice. I was in London recently, and a lot of places did not accept cash at all. I've been at airports, and they're like, no, no cash at all. And so when you're going around Europe, you know, you're, I mean, we have the cash is king mantra. I did see most people, uh, me, me personally, I think, well, our debit cards and stuff, just like App Apple Pay, they have the little, you know, uh, tap tap pay and stuff on our cars now too but yeah that's that's what i use mainly anyway the only place that don't have the tap and go is walmart you would think walmart would have it but they don't i can't even say they're behind because everybody's still in walmart but it's like come on walmart update your system tap and go people can get in and out of walmart to the quickness but now how and so when you're going around Europe, you know, you're, I mean, we have the cash is king mantra, but now how things have gone the last few years, the cashless, the tap and go thing is a lot more popular. If you go to Sweden, you might show up in bars or like, no, no cash, tap and go only, okay, mm. or credit card only. So make sure if you're going to be traveling to Europe, you do have a card that works here. So MasterCard, Visa card, and make sure it has that little Wi-Fi signal on there so you yeah. can tap and go because it'll make your life a lot easier. And whether you're here in Barcelona or you're in Greece nice. or you're in Germany, another don't I have for you is don't forget to learn a few words before you come. Mm -hmm. Because seriously, just a, a gracias or danke or merci, danke. A thank you, will go a long way with people, okay? I never heard Especially danke. if you're going to smaller country, going to like Lithuania, and you know that achu means thank you. They're achu. like, you do achu, man, thank you? Oh, cool. And people are a little Ooh. bit nicer. Look, not everyone achu. expects you to speak every single language in the world. But they do appreciate if you know some, you know, some basic words. It goes a long way. So make sure you always know the pleases and the thank yous and the yeses and the noes. That goes a long way. And also good. Nice. Good's always special. Nice, especially when you're looking at food. And you go good. They like that. Now, whether you're <laughs> using the local language or it's just speaking the English, my next stone for you is, don't be loud on public transportation. <laughs> Look. I know when you get excited and you travel, your voice gets up and you get excited and you get talking louder and louder. You need to bring yep. it down. <laughs> a lot of places throughout Europe, you, you, like the subway becomes like a quiet zone. Public like the library. On the train <laughs> becomes a quiet zone, okay? So remember that. So don't get a little like the overzealous library. with your communication when you're on public transportation. Also, don't raise your voice and just speak English louder thinking that people would understand you. It doesn't work that way. Just because you speak loud, do it doesn't too. mean all of a sudden, oh, the English part of my brain works now. No. And another thing I think is important to remember when you come to Europe is don't forget about the regionality of Europe because, yes, people are Germans, but they're really Bavarians. Yes, oh, we're wow. in Spain, but here in Barcelona, it's Catalonia. We are Catalans. And you see a lot Catalans. of regional pride, city pride throughout Europe. Barcelona. And that's what I recommend. When you're going to a small town or a, a region, go find the regional museum. Go find the Museum of Catalonia. Go find the, the, the Alsace Regional Museum, Folk Museum. In Austria, you go there, the, the Triolian you know, Folk Museum in, in Innsbruck. Like, the regional stuff here, those regional museums, that pride really comes out. And that's why sometimes you might get a weird look. We say, oh, you're Spanish. Oh, like, wow. uh, I'm Catalan. Oh, you're German. That's why, that's one of the main things I'm going to do, too, is go to music. I don't normally go to music, but... It's like to learn about the country, the culture, and the history and stuff. Got to go to the museums because that's going to give you a little bit more detail about where you are. So, and I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. Uh, I'm from Bayern, from Bavaria. And so you have that. So just be aware of it. So now we're here in Dublin, Ireland. That's St. Patrick's Cathedral Ireland. behind me. And our next don't for Europe we have for you is don't get discouraged. When I say that is when you're traveling in Europe or you're traveling anywhere, really, you might have this idea of what a city is going to be like. Oh, Dublin's going to be this great thing with these pubs and friendly people and stuff like this. And yes, it is. But then sometimes you'll see a bad side of a city. I mean, I know people, I mean, I love Paris and I'll go to Paris like at a drop of a hat. And I'd move there today. But the thing is, I know some people go, they're like, oh, I expected so much more. And they were so disappointed by it. It made them not want to travel more. Mm. Don't get that way. Just because the city you were dreaming about 
doesn't live up to your dreams doesn't mean you're not going to find a place you. that goes beyond your expectations. So maybe Dublin is a disappointment, but then you go to someplace like Kilkenny or, or Waterford or, mm -hmm. or Kinsale and you're like, wow, these beautiful small Irish towns yeah. are so gorgeous and such friendly people and great food and, and all these things. That it's such a great surprise. So don't get discouraged if some town you go to doesn't live up to those expectations. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say is do a lot of research before you travel, yeah. because a lot of the guidebooks only tell you the good stuff. They don't tell you the bad stuff or the things you should. And I know that's what, like, even just learning about different countries, most of y'all will tell me, hey, go, don't go to the major cities. Go to the small towns because you're going to get the more authentic food and all, you're going to get the real full fullness of that country in those smaller towns you know uh which i mean you know uh, those small towns are not touristy anyway but like he said do your research of course i've been to new york like i said i've said before new york you see the tall buildings the tall you know and you're like wow it's just like the movies and stuff but it, it it don't live up to the expectation unless you're just a city person and like big cities and stuff. It's not going to live up to your expectation. I'm a small town guy, so that's why New York, I was amazed at the buildings and, you know, Times Square and stuff. But after that, I'm like, dang, I could not live here. You should know, be prepared fast, for very before fast you go. City. And that's what we try to do on our videos, all right? So here we are in London for a little more of our London, jumps London. on Europe. Now, when you are traveling around trying to visit as much of Europe as you can, you're gonna find a lot of cheap airlines. You know, the Ryanairs and EasyJets and Vuelings, they're awesome, they're super helpful to get you where you wanna go. But my don't for that is, don't think that the cheap airlines are always your best bet to travel. Thanks. I'm saying this because yes, you can get a really cheap flight, but then you gotta pay for your luggage, and then you gotta fight to get a seat, and then sometimes the airports they fly into aren't the main airports, so then you gotta take a longer bus ride in. Or Ooh. if you're getting like, you have to fly out on a Sunday here in London, for example, and you use a Ryanair or an EasyJet, it's gonna be really expensive for you to get out to those airports at those wee early hours or wee late hours. Mm -hmm. So don't think that the cheap airlines are gonna be the cheapest overall price. <coughs> Make sure you are checking the options. I know for me, when I used to live in Lithuania, I would check Ryanair and then I look at British Airways. Because in British Airways, it was more expensive, but I would get in at 10 o'clock in the morning versus <coughs> you know, two o'clock in the morning. So it was like, wait, I don't have to pay for a taxi. I could get in a normal hour. It didn't make it a lot safer and a lot cheaper, like overall for pricing. So just, just mm -hmm. check that out. Sometimes the easy jets are great and it's perfectly fine, but do leave your That's options That's good open advice right there. That's very good those. advice. Another don't I have for you when you're coming here to Europe is don't think that all your stereotypes and all the food stereotypes and people stereotypes, <laughs> all the things you've learned throughout your life and you've seen in the movies and stuff like that, don't think they're all going to come true. I know a lot of people think oh, I'm gonna to go to Italy and meet the most romantic man ever and he's gonna feed me spaghetti and meatballs and stuff like that. Well, first off, he might feed you <laughs> spaghetti and he might feed you meatballs, but not together, okay? Uh, uh, but you'd be like, oh, my, my dream, my, my dream of Paris was shattered because it wasn't as romantic as I thought it would be. And, and Italy wasn't as crazy as I thought it would be. And England wasn't as British. And I see a lot of people get kind of disappointed yeah. by that. That Don't happens, let that, that disappoint happens. you. Realize <laughs> Europe is all these cultures, all these people. It's a really great place to be. And don't let kind of your your, your preconceptions ruin your experience oh, when wow. you're here. Go and enjoy. Enjoy the culture. Learn more about it because you might find out that, you know what? What my stereotype thought before I came here is totally different than what I had. Mm -hmm. And I love this version of Europe so much better. So I hope that helps you know a bit more of what you don't do when you come here to Europe. If you want to learn more, maybe the don'ts to come into the U.S. or don'ts to go into different countries around yeah. the world, check this us out on good. our website at WaltersWorld.com. <laughs> We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest. And we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. And if you like videos like this, hit, hit like this, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll get videos in your feed every Wednesday and Saturday. So we'll say bye from here in London. This was good. This was good. Uh, he's definitely right because... Uh... You know, see a lot of videos, stereotype videos, especially. And sometimes, most of the time, it's from people's point of views. And with those point of views, of course, of course, uh, every experience is different for everybody. But like he said, the stereotypes, some may come true, some may not. But I just know for me, just seeing all the different experience that everybody has, I just know. Really, I just hope my experience, I want my experience. I just want it to be good, you know? I don't want it to be, you know, what I've been seeing in video. I want it, I want it to be a different experience. Like, I know I'm going to be shocked. 
I know that, you know, I'm definitely going to have some culture shocks and all that stuff. But I feel like I just want to have a good experience because it's going to be something I want to do often, if that makes sense. So but this was good. Y'all make sure y'all like the video and subscribe to Walter's World. Uh, always good getting those don'ts in. Like you said, every country is different. Just like here in the state, every state is different. You know, you can't treat each other each of them the same or thinking that just makes up for the whole continent so but i enjoyed this hope y'all did as well hit that subscribe button send out more recommendations and y'all be blessed be the best to be you i'm out